Welcome to the Sherlyn Shirley Show. Today I have a great young man as a guest. He's here to talk a little bit about what his experience has been in the real estate area. He and his wife of less than two years are trying to buy a home. And I just wanted to ask him a couple questions and have him maybe give what his experiences have been. So welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm excited to talk to you about what it's like to uh, try and buy a house in today's housing market. A couple of things that are going on there. Just barely dipped my toe into that world in the last month or so. And uh, yeah, I already want to get out of the pool, not to mix <laughs> metaphors. So yeah, what do you want to talk about first? Well, let's just talk about, so how did you go about, I mean, like you decided you wanted to look at homes. Is there a reason for that? Or it's just because you are newly married and now it's kind of like we've, we've got a nest egg and we want to just kind of go out and look for homes and see what we want and kind of look in areas we want because we live in a one bedroom apartment. What, what was the reasoning for that? All of it. <laughs> yeah. Good question. Well, part of it is sure. Part of it is marriage and it just seems like it's the next step to do at a certain point in your, you know, mid to late twenties or early thirties or whenever you can swing it. Also it's, it just comes with, Hey, renting for a bunch of years and you don't want to do that forever. You want to eventually, I would think, you know, some people in a city especially are content to do that forever. And sometimes that's all you can do. I want to own some land. <laughs> I want to have some space that's, that's ours that we can work on and make beautiful and make it our own and, you know, make it shine, mm -hmm. uh, make sure. it personal. I think that's a really important thing in life to have a space that you can really apply yourself to. And that's, that's what I want, you know, and sure. renting is great at a certain point. It has its benefits because you don't have a bunch of responsibility to the place. Something breaks. Hey, it's not my problem. It's a minor inconvenience, but I'll call a guy. He'll come in. He'll fix it. I don't know what the parts are. I don't know or care how much they cost. They fix it for free and we're off and running. That's really cool. That's a nice benefit. But at the same time, it's not really yours. True. And you don't get to hang stuff up on the wall in a certain way. You don't get to make certain modifications when maybe you want to. Yeah, so I that's think true. that's really the major reason. You might even be able to put in high toilets or something, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a plus, you know, when you get older. I know you're not, but, you know, there's a lot of people out here who are and they like those. And nowadays when they build houses, they pretty much put those high toilets in there. Yeah, or like a classy, a walk-in tile shower with a glass door and a big rain shower head with like the jets on the walls and stuff. Nice. You can't just put that in an apartment. And I certainly don't live in an apartment that already has that. <laughs> okay, so you have been living in an apartment for a while, I take it. Yeah, bounced around to different ones, six years okay. now. Wow, six years. So yeah, it's about time, I think, become a homeowner and married for almost two years, right? Yeah. A wife and one dog, happy family. Going out there, what did you do? Like as a couple, say, we've been looking at Zillow for a year. We've been looking all over the place. Did you, how did you get a realtor? Did you get a realtor? What did you do? How, what was your experience in all that? Yeah. Well, the lead up is probably like a year up till this point of vaguely wanting a house, but not being serious enough to devote any real time to that or real effort <laughs> to making that mm -hmm. work, just being kind of content where we are, but vaguely wishing for something better. You can't always apply all your focus to everything at once, right? Mm. So we were looking mostly on the internet, mostly at Zillow, at listings and, and getting an idea for what we like and what we don't like. Mm, good idea. Just trying to get a bunch of different inputs, see what houses are even like, because I don't watch a lot of those HGTV home renovation shows. You know, I, I'm not inside a bunch of other people's houses all the time. I'm not a burglar or anything like that. So it's good to <laughs> see what houses are actually like out there and see what kind of qualities you want and you know what are the deal breakers, what are the ones you can't live without, things like that. Get an idea for how much things cost, mm, for how yeah, much space you're going to need, how much land there is out there. Most of the time, a lot less than <laughs> you might think. Um, I guess, yeah, the days of having more than one acre are kind of over unless you're uh, a big time guy or you're really out in the country. Yeah, land is definitely more expensive in many areas depending on where you're looking to and that's another thing is depending on what state you're in what your background is what you're doing as a job how much money you can save because it is hard to do that uh, when you have two car home and um, uh, apartment rental and just essentials I mean with inflation going on right now how has that all felt uh, a lot <laughs> the answer <laughs> is it's felt a lot uh, yeah it seems like life has been financially just kind of harder to live in the last two years or so since the pandemic supply chain stuff 
stuff going on in inflation and all that jazz than it was beforehand. Just things are kind of cost more than they used to. And if you haven't changed jobs, which I haven't changed jobs during that time, you haven't gotten a big jump in pay either at that time. You've only gotten maybe a fixed raise if that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, 2% cost of living when inflation was eight or 9%. Yeah, I guess that's a minus 6%, right? Yeah, so that can be that can be tough. Yeah. But to get back to your question on housing, how did it go getting started? Really, once we moved past, you know, vaguely wishing for something better and looking on the internet, decided to actually get serious about it and really try looking, everything kind of followed quicker than expected. And it was a lot less official and formal than I expected. Mm. Really, okay. all you need to do to get a realtor is text or email one and say, hey, would you like to be my realtor? Yeah, and but didn't say, you look into them at all? Did you not, you know, well, see yeah, how many houses they sold? Sure, that kind we, of stuff? we look, you know, there's websites that have lists of realtors by area and then the different statistics and their characteristics and stuff. Sure. And we went with a buyer's agent. Mm, okay, good. You get in certain situations where the same realtor is representing both a seller and a buyer of a house, which is mm -hmm. crazy that that's even possible to me, but uh, it can happen. Yeah, we picked out from a list of people that work only with buyers and not with sellers. Oh, and wow, I didn't even know also, that was a thing. Yeah, and someone who's also explicitly saying like, hey, I like to work with first-time home buyers, people that are new with the process in the market. I like to educate. I like to make people feel okay <laughs> about taking such a big step. So yeah. that was another factor too, picking then, who we did. And then how did you like set a price fix on your, what you wanted to spend? Did you had an idea basically, because obviously you have saved. That's the other thing, you know, working hard and saving because we saw recently that that was going to be something that maybe wasn't going to be promoted or you wouldn't feel good about it because it was going to cost you more in a mortgage for something like that. That was done by government. Uh, where they would charge more for people who have good credit, which seems absolutely crazy. So you saved money. You and your wife worked hard, right? You both work jobs full time and you work hard and you're saving money, putting it away so you can buy a house that you kind of have an idea in your head how much that would cost or you set a budget. Yeah. How did that work out? I mean, was that just something you discussed together and said, this is it, this is the fast, this is the most we're going and this is what we're going to do or? Yeah, pretty much. Um, first of all, real quick, that mortgage rate fee that you were talking about that the government imposes recently. Yeah, that was that was in effect already. They didn't make it out of thin air. It's not new. It's actually been going on for like 20 years. All they did now is increase it. That's, yeah. that's cool. <laughs> You're probably yeah. already paying it. I'm sure I am. I, I'm sure I pay something. I know we do on my electric bill and my gas bill and everything else. Yeah, Assistance good times. For someone. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, say, yeah, I'm, I'm no expert. You know, I had personal finance <laughs> in like middle school. Uh, so I learned some stuff there. I certainly no budgetary expert. Try and save some money. Vaguely understand that you should probably you should try to have a 20% down payment on a house, but it's not necessarily required. There's ways around it, but it's good to have. Why is it 20 and not 30? Why is it 20 and not 10? I have no idea why 20 is the number, but that's kind of what we had in mind. And we don't want to go beyond our means. We don't want to spend money that we don't have <laughs> any more than buying a house already is doing that. Mentioned something to me that you didn't want to have futons in all the rooms or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Before we were by on the, end of the yeah. process, by the time you shake hands and close the deal, Deal and sign all the paperwork and officially own the house and you're left with like, you know, a hundred bucks in your bank account <laughs> after going through the whole process. I understand. It does take time to recoup, but the nice thing about buying a home is for the first 45 days, it's almost two months, you don't have a, a mortgage payment, which is kind of nice. Then again, I mean, you know. woohoo, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> After all that. Yeah. That's a nice yeah. treat, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and there's different, you know, there's all different kinds of loans and it's, it's a very stressful thing to be considering. I mean, it seems like a lot of people have gone through it and I never have. So everyone, you know, everyone's made it through, I guess that's good. It's like having kids, you know, it's this crazy, stressful, life consuming thing that everyone seems to do. It's expensive. And it's confusing <laughs> and it's stressful. Yes. And it, it puts a lot on your mind to put up that kind of money to commit yourself to a, a 15 or 20 or 30 year thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I, hey, I'm happily married, but to commit yourself to a house, what if I want to move in five or 10? And of course you can, no one's stopping you, but then it's a lot of hassle. Are you sure you want this house? Are you sure you're sure? Because hey, I'm not a star athlete. I'm not a star musician. I can't, uh, buying a house is not nothing to me. In fact, it's everything financially. So that makes it pretty serious and something that you want to spend a lot of time with. But at the same same time, the market is the way it is. You actually don't get to spend much time with anything at all, even though it is such a serious purchase. You yeah, normally I, only get to spend, well, hey, some people spend even less time than you. Even if you only spend a couple days, someone else may spend one day or three hours. And there you go. 
the house is yeah. theirs. So it yeah. can be tricky. It can be freaky and high stakes. Mm -hmm. And for, for something to be high stakes and scary and urgent, it's, it's a weird soupy combo that, yeah, it's not fun. Well, I mean, I think looking at homes are kind of fun. And especially when you're doing it on Zillow or online or realtor.com or whatever, and you're just looking, you can look at pictures online, but it is not what the house really looks like when you get there. It's that's just true. not. And I am being too harsh on it. That is yeah. the fun part. That's the exciting part. And I yeah, think that's why those TV shows are so popular is because mm -hmm. that's, you know, the fun, exciting part about looking for a house is actually sure. going inside them and looking around and trying things out, seeing how right. things look and imagining yourself, imagining your future and you living there and the kind of things that you do. Right. That's and a then, fun thing you know, to do. That's really cool. Yeah, and then reality is. hits when you get the paperwork out, you know? <laughs> yeah, that happens too. And, and that's kind of what I wanted to talk about a little bit here too, was the fact that I know that you and your wife spent some time looking at some houses and in areas where, you know, it was kind of enjoyable. You know, there's a little wine house by there that you enjoyed going to and stuff. And, and I think that's wonderful. And those are things that everyone likes to do. And especially if you can find a place that you can walk to work or something, that's like even an added thing. When you walk into a home that you're going to buy, you know, pretty much you feel the vibe. You either walk in there and you go, oh yeah, I'm going to look at this house. You know, well, I'll take a, a serious look. Or you're going to walk in and you're going to go, ah, I don't think we're going to look at this house. Or, you know, you may walk in and your heart may go, oh my gosh, this is it. And so all those things kind of happened to you to some degree and to you and your wife. So why don't you share a little bit about that? And then we'll talk a little more about um, what the experience was for you and how you're still looking for a home. <laughs> yeah. Like you said, it's a house. You've been in them before. Hopefully, you know what a good one feels like. You certainly, everyone probably knows what a bad one feels like, unfortunately. And when you walk in a house, you can kind of tell right away if it's right for you or not. There can be some exceptions, sure. There can be borderline cases. But I would say most of the time, on the extreme ends of the scale, you're going to know right away if it's a house that you're interested or not, interested in or not. And yeah, this um, the first one we we ever looked at that was you know making a big deal out of it. And it's this it's this exciting milestone. Oh, we're looking at someone else's house for the first time while they're not in it. You know, kind of a weird weird thing if you think about it. In we go, and there were like twenty other people at the house like there was a party going on and it wasn't an open house this is you had set up a time with a realtor to go into this home yeah yeah i forgot to mention that so this was a scheduled thing with a time Amazing. slot you know with the understanding being that it was a you know yeah one-on-one -on -one, so to speak time sure. slot yeah so it wasn't an open house it was a scheduled thing there turns out there was like 20 people there from There's, you know never heard five of such or a six thing. other touring groups and their realtors as well and everyone was a little confused so that we all just toured the house kind of at the same time it was like a museum <laughs> tour it yeah. was like a colonial Williamsburg thing. I've never heard like of such a thing. Room to room. And, <laughs> oh, this is the kitchen with like 20 people in there. I mean, it was really kind of confusing. Yeah, I would say that would be confusing. And then also, did you guys you get to like experience it, like open pantry doors or or you know, turn on faucets, flush toilets, anything like that, turn on showers. I mean, how do you... No, people just kind of stood around and looked at stuff and oh, wow. talked weird. amongst themselves and just kept it moving. And it was just kind of really quick and I didn't know what was going on. And our re I, the realtors were also confused. So they weren't, you know, they weren't yeah. being helpful either. I think everyone was a little just uncomfortable and, and stuff. Yeah. And then they were also like passing out their business cards to everybody and leaving them <laughs> on the counter and stuff. Yeah, they and do And there's like six yeah. realtors. So that was kind of weird. Yeah, very. Yeah. I think they leave their business cards on the counter so people know that they did bring somebody in there. That would be very uncomfortable. And especially since I have, but I think I've shared this with you that I have um, recently, my husband and I have sold and bought three houses in the last what four or five years. And it's been quite the experience. That's why we wanted to talk to you because I, I just find it fascinating that the experience has changed to such a degree. I would just flip out if I walked in and there was three other couples, even just five people in there, I would be like, what is going on? We have an appointment. That just seems crazy to me. So that had to be a little bit uncomfortable for everyone, especially if they are first time home buyers. You don't know what to expect anyway. And it's the first house you looked at. I mean, it yeah. was certainly weird. I don't want to be overly dramatic because it was, no. you know, 20, 30 minutes of just a weird situation. Um, I don't think that is the norm. We've toured several other the houses since that hasn't been the case in any other tour um, so i think that was just a fluke i'm still very strange i think what caused it is you know it's a attractive looking house mm -hmm. it's not just us that were interested in it clearly there were several other people that were interested in it too and it went on the market there's a thing that you can do when you're selling a house i used to think it would take like a long time to sell a house because it's such a big decision <laughs> 
Yeah. I don't know. It's stupid. I, you know, uh, idealistic kid thinking that, oh, people would like think about this for a month before they do it. Um, no. So a lot of times houses go on the market. And I don't know if this has ever been the case, but it is right now, at least in this area. They could go on the market on a Thursday or Friday, and then they sell the house that day, the next day, or very easily on Monday, you know? That's so they true. give people a couple of days over the weekend to look at it if they want. And then they know they have a good house. They know someone's going to want it. They take an offer on Monday. It's crazy. I mean, you know, I, I can't say too bad because the last house we sold when we had to move because of a job, it was on the market on Friday at five o'clock. And by Sunday at seven, we did have a contract on it. And that was during COVID. There you go. Blew my exactly. mind. Yeah, that was during COVID. I will, And we bought this house during COVID. So I can say that that was kind of crazy. Who would think you'd be moving during that time? You know, it was a little bit different. But what I'm looking at now now is seeing numbers and all. And we talked a little bit about that. Also, the experience to me, it seems like uh, this is something that's going on with a lot of people. I've talked to a couple other couples that are looking and a couple of these couples have been married for a while, like one of them for 12 years. They're just ready to maybe move up to a bigger house and they can't find a house. I mean, they, they the minute it goes on the market, um, it's within sometimes hours that it's pending or contingent. And that's shocking. I, I don't know what's going on. I don't know if we just don't have enough houses. I mean, I know supply and demand. I understand that. You explained to me that, that the first house you looked at, you liked it. It was great. And uh, you couldn't even stand up in the master bathroom. <laughs> Which, oh yeah that too yeah yeah that, it was like a, a victorian house from like the 1910s or 20s or something like that uh, they just built them differently back then long thin narrow hallways a lot of the stuff i really like about it like the carved wood and the wood doors and floors and stuff they can mm -hmm. be really beautiful if they're taken care of they were just also just different purposes back then different sure. sized people back then yeah. for sure and yeah uh, staircase bang my head going up and down <laughs> into the basement as well uh oh, no. just, just shorter ceilings you know and right Crazy tall, yeah. close to six foot, six one yeah. or two, yeah. nothing. You know, not a basketball yeah. player or anything. No. But uh, yeah, this house just did not accommodate <laughs> even <laughs> even me. And then, yeah, and also in the bathroom, couldn't stand up in the shower or that was kind of odd too. But That's very odd. But I think that might have been, maybe they redid something. You know, like sometimes in those old homes, you have a closet or something and you can turn it into something else because you want a master bathroom, which I can't blame you. But that's very interesting. And then, to, so maybe share another experience on looking and, and what that was like. So that was off to a weird start. Again, not to be dramatic. It was it was just one showing of a house, but that was a weird thing that, you know, sets expectations going forward as a first impression. And then the second impression was not very good either uh, <laughs> and it did a totally different way. Uh, this was a house that was like half the price of the first one, which should have been a red flag right away. Uh, <laughs> but it's like, oh, hey, you can just get a lower priced house and then you can spend more money personalizing it or renovating. It. Again, very idealistic. <laughs> Very not connected to reality. <laughs> Turns out it was like half the price because it was essentially in a foreclosure uh, condition. Oh, yeah, sure. And it, and it was one of those houses, like we mentioned earlier, that you know the second you walk in, oh, yeah, this ain't it. This is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm turning around. Yep, let's, this was a bad decision from the get-go. I right. realize that now. Yeah, let's on to the next one. But sometimes don't you think that's good experience? Because then it gets a little more experience into you. So then you're looking at, okay, that price range maybe wasn't the price range we need to look at. We need to step <laughs> it up a little bit yeah, here. It was certainly, yeah. it was certainly uh, a realization that, oh, there are no free lunches, you know? Yeah, unless you're you want to You're not going to get one over on. There's yeah. a reason that it's sitting there. It's kind of like you drive past a restaurant that's open but completely empty. Yeah. yeah. And you're like, what's... Yeah, Why maybe not? we shouldn't stop here to eat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it kind yeah. of gives you an idea. It gives you an idea. But you did say that the setting was beautiful. And that's what's really sad about oh, it. Oh, it, maybe... it was right on a river. It was next to like really, yeah. really nice, like million dollar houses. Wow. Uh, very so beautiful somebody... with columns and fountains out front and stuff on, on a riverbank. It was really wow. beautiful surrounding yeah. this house. <laughs> and then this house was, you know. In the yeah. yin-yang symbol, this was the black dot in the middle of the white. <laughs> right. Someone will end up buying it and probably just tearing it down or maybe redoing totally everything. Yeah. You, yeah. you have a vision. Rat yeah. corpses out of the yeah. cellar. And, <laughs> you know, you got to get a clean crew in there if you don't knock yeah. it down. Well, hopefully yeah, there's no... more experience and more money could definitely do something. Exactly. Yeah, there you and go. And I wish uh, them well. But not Yeah. Me. Okay. So let's move on to maybe another... Uh, experience that you, that you had looking at houses and how you felt and 
what happened there? Yeah. So I think this is, this is, this works out nicely. This is really tracing itself in like kind of three acts here. So the first house was, uh, you know, a weird, confusing muddle of like, what are we getting ourselves into? Why is this like a museum tour? The second house was a, <laughs> oh, this is, this is bad. This is the empire strikes back. This is where the bad guys start to win. Um, it's not going well for us. You know, are, are these really the houses that are out there for us? We got to pick and choose between these. Uh, and then the third house where it all turns around, but then it turns back around again into being bad. Uh, the end. Um, so the third house was beautiful and perfect in every way. <laughs> <laughs> of course. It was the dream house to, to both of us and really walking through it solo again, no one else scheduled at the same time for a long time, even thinking about being a devil's advocate. Now, what could be wrong about this house? What could you say is wrong about this house? We couldn't come up with anything. It was just really good. The kind that you can really imagine uh, yourself living in and, and living well in and having a good time and raising a family and having friends together and just a good space, a Which good space, awesome. God's green earth to chop off for yourself and live and grow your garden and live a good life. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Very inspiring. Also, uh, more money than we could afford. <laughs> and well, also, also in very high demand. And also one of those that was posted on a Friday, taking bids on a Monday and closing yeah. the deal on a Monday. Yeah. Uh, and we, we saw it on Saturday. I'm sure many other people did as well. Put in a put in a solid offer. All the money. I think that's a pretty solid offer to push your, <laughs> your giant pile of chips on the table and say, I'm all in, mm -hmm. you know, um, makes you sweat for sure. Uh, at certain points, I wasn't sure whether I wanted them to accept it or not. You know, that's kind of how it goes. You got to stick see, to what you, you saw. Do. You saw bologna in the future? <laughs> yes, and, and white rice, like a 50-pound yeah, burlap sure. sack. Sure, been there. <laughs> Chef Boyardee pizzas was what was yeah. the boss. Living so at the it. Costco, for sure. Eating all the free samples and then changing my clothes. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Yes. Yeah. Um, here's the thing. Uh, didn't get it because, hey, there's a lot of other people that wanted it too. Even though we offered 10% above the asking price, which was news to me as well, I thought, oh, silly me. The asking price was their starting bid and you went lower than that. Turns yeah, out- used to be. That's the floor and you have to go higher to show how interested and how much you yeah. got to sweeten the deal for the seller, which was very confusing. This is very confusing to me too, because it's never been like that. And at least not since I've been buying and selling houses, which not that I buy and sell a lot, but I mean, you know, we owned one in Illinois and then in Wisconsin three. And so it's four homes in the last 30 years. And most of them, three of them in the last like four or five years, I just don't know what's happened. And I'm not sure how we correct it. And I'm not sure how we help young couples be able to get a house. I mean, I don't know what to do about it. I don't it. know what we can do. I don't know who we is uh, because the incentives are kind of lined up to where every individual person or every individual family is looking out for themselves mm -hmm. and as they should be. And that contributes to kind of the situation that we're in. It's kind of a feedback loop, you know? Yeah. Interest well, rates are high right now. If you already have a house, and you have an interest rate from the good old days where it was like a 3% mortgage and you're locked in, why would you want to sell your house? Yeah, maybe you'd make a lot of money in the short term. Then you'd have to lock yourself in for 30 years at 6%. Yeah, true. That's all a big difference compared to 3%. It and is. the prices of the houses are going to be higher now too. So I right. don't blame anybody that has a house for wanting to hunker down. You yeah. have a bunker to hunker down in. That's great. <laughs> good for you. But the thing is, it's like, hey, no one's building new bunkers, at least not fast enough. Oh. But what's going to happen to the rest of us? Although they are putting up two giant apartment buildings right across the street from us. So True. I guess that's what they're going to do instead. Well, I mean, that's what they're going to do in more, I guess, urban areas, maybe continue to do that. I know there are a lot of uh, apartment buildings where you live in that area. I mean, in that whole county, you know, you're looking outside of there, which and also just the closer you are to a city, the more expensive it's going to be, you know? Sure. Absolutely. It is. And you want to be out a little bit, right? A little. Yeah. Um, it's tough, I think, to be in a neighborhood where you can reach out your arms from your wall and then touch your neighbor's wall. I like to right. have you know, a little bit of space, but that's just personal preference stuff. Sure. Hopefully you don't give up because it's really important that we do continue on and keep looking and keep going through the experiences. Uh, I know they're not the easiest thing to go through. As I know, once you put in a bid on something and you really had your heart set on it, it can be upsetting. I mean, I can remember looking at houses and 
you know, you, by the time you look at like five or six of them, you can't remember which one had what bathroom in it, except you can right. remember when you can't stand up in it. And it's tough too, because most other things, the price reflects the value of the thing. You know, like if you buy a gallon of milk and it's 250, that 250 pays for everything, mm -hmm. right? The cows, the farmer that's milking them and like the truck that takes the milk to the place where it gets processed, whatever. You get the mm -hmm. idea. Mm -hmm. Every every step that it took the milk to get from the cow to the shelf is included in that 250 and everyone's getting paid all the way down the line. And it can't be three. It has to be 250 because that's what it costs to get the milk there at that time. You know, things can change over time. At one moment, there's one price. In a house, uh, it doesn't work that way. It's not connected to the real value of the thing at all. And it doesn't have to be. It's based on whatever you think it's worth, based on an appraiser. It's based on an idea from some guy who walked around it and went, I think it's worth this much. Yeah. It's also, doesn't matter what the appraiser said, it's also worth whatever someone's willing to pay. True. And yeah, the seller puts it up for a certain price. The buyer can go under that and then lose the house or they can go above that. And we went 10% uh, above asking for this particular house and didn't get it. So that means someone went above 10% above what they were asking for. True. It's like going to the grocery store and saying, hey, I know that milk is 250, but I'll give you $5 for it. It's mm -hmm. confusing to me. You know, it's, it's yeah. tough to grapple with. It's very tough. To it. It's very tough, actually. And it, it is very confusing to me too, as well. That's why I wanted to talk a little bit about it, because I think a lot of people are going through it right now. And a lot of people are having the same experiences and they're frustrated and they're not sure mm -hmm. where to turn. And the one thing that I think about is, I mean, the ceiling can fall out anytime too. I mean, you're playing a, a gamble, these people that are doing that with their homes. They're playing a gamble. And the, and the thing is, you know, you do have what, what's called an assessed value. You can look up what it was assessed at. And that's what they tax it on based on, on that. But if you buy a house for a heck of a lot more, then they're going to end up coming in and assessing it at a higher value. And you're going to pay more in taxes. So you're hurting yourself to a degree. Right. That's the thing is that the assessment is is not real. <laughs> you know, it is it is kind of flexible in that sense. And it's mm -hmm. not necessarily connected to what you're doing with the property. It could be just things outside of your control, quote yeah. unquote, the market that's going on outside. Right. It's hard I, to make smart decisions going forward. You know. Yeah, it's kind of I, I understand that it can be kind of scary, especially when when you're starting out and you want to start a family and things like that, it's kind of like that is the the next step, you know, buying a home and then you start a family and that's kind of how it works. It is. I, I have heard this, like I said, from people that have been married for 10 years, people that have been married for 20 years and now young people that are just first home first time home buyers that are trying to get a home and it's very, very difficult for them. And I just wanted to make sure that people out there could hear this from the horse's mouth and understand that. <laughs> This is not easy on on young couples. It's not easy on any couple. And that when you're putting your house up for sale, think about that. And when you're talking to realtors, think about that. When realtors are talking to first home buyers, talk, you know, think about that. And sometimes, I mean, you know, used to in the in the olden days, I'm going to say, sometimes people would actually look at the couple that was buying the home. It would be like, oh, I want to help them or something, but it doesn't happen like that anymore. Or, nope. oh, I want to keep them out. Yeah, it could be that yeah, too. Yeah, that, well, that too. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. But um, yes, you're right. There used to be more of a uh, more of a human element in it. Yes, very much so. Than yes. there than there is now. It's more optimal. It's more what can we squeeze, you know? Right. How do we get that extra thousand dollars instead right. of you know, the homeowner? We weren't gonna be able to close for two more weeks due uh, to just paperwork and everything uh, else. And he just said to us, you know, hey, you can go ahead and bring some of your stuff up and put it in the garage. Now you don't hear that much anymore. He was very good about, you know, giving us the garage door opener and we could bring stuff in a couple weeks before we even closed on the house. We didn't even own it yet. And that's a gentleman's gentleman, you know, that's like the handshake kind of thing, but that's the kind of guy he was. We were grateful for that. And I just think it's really sad that you guys haven't had such a great experience yet. There is well, we're a house. very lucky in other ways. I don't want to sound like we're getting beat up on. Oh, no, um, no. It is tough out there. It's tough for everybody to end on a bit of a hopeful note. You know, this was only one week's experience. Right. Uh, this was, hey, we dipped our toe in the water and did not get hurt, saw a shark fin in the distance and then went, <laughs> oh, I'm not going to, I'm going to take my toe out of the water, you know? Yeah, that just for a that. while. We haven't even really dived in yet, although we did risk every bit of money that we have. That was intense for a couple of days. <laughs> but yeah. next step, I mean, we got all the money back. That's the thing. That's unlike yeah. the casino, you can bet it all and then still get it back if you lose. Correct. We go back to not having a house, which, oh, gee, we're pretty good at that. We've been doing that for a while now. Well, so yeah, good... next steps, keep trying. I mean, right. there's going to be more of them out there, um, yes. less than there used to be. Hey, you know, it's a world well, we, we were just, in. we were just talking about that. WRA.org resources, uh, the Wisconsin Realtor Association.org and their resources, property in Wisconsin housing statistics. And we were just talking about how in 
So far, as of May, uh, April, the end of April, there's been 15,237 houses sold in Wisconsin. That's just four months. Now, last 15. year, 15,237 in the whole state. Now, last year, 2022, there was 78,344 sold, but that's the whole year. We're only at four months. The year before 2021 was 91,487. That's crazy. And of course, from 2021, the median price range was 240,000. 2022, 264,000, and now it's 267,500 is what they're saying for the first part of the year. Obviously, the prices are going up and the uh, amount of homes for sale is definitely down. And if you go quarterly, it would end up being 43,000 houses sold against 78 last year. It's either there's not enough houses up for sale, there's just not enough people putting their house up for sale. I'm not sure. Then again, have you and your uh, wife thought about maybe looking for a lot and building at some point? I mean, that's very cool. Uh, that's the dream, right? That sounds like it's a lot more complicated and expensive. And we were already had a, had a challenging time contending with the market as it is normally. Yeah. Um, and that's with a very friendly, enthusiastic realtor who we are not paying. She just hangs out with us for free on the weekends in the middle of the day. Uh, compare <laughs> that's the way that to, to look at it. Yeah. Pay that, uh, compare that to a contractor who, you know, is just a different kind of relationship and bringing them in and, uh, hey, I don't know anything about building a house. It seems like there's a million different ways I could get scammed <laughs> in that process or well, I think if you have additional money or pay extra fees. So some I of the good playing it the normal way, the normal yeah. game is, is kind of the path for us. Okay. Hey, I mean, if we continue to have challenges for a long time, then maybe we could pursue something like that in the future. Well, just don't close any doors. I mean, first of all, in our state of Wisconsin, there is a law that that these builders have to be certified. You're not going to get somebody to build a home that is going to be, you know, there's a lot of really good home builders out there, as well as all the other contractors that work with home builders. The good news is that when you do a uh, building mortgage, then you don't even pay for your home. You don't start paying mortgage payments till the contracting, the business, until the house is done when you can move in. So that's kind of an interesting thought too. And you use your your land for your down payment. So it's kind of interesting. There's different options out there and you should probably talk to your whoever your financing place is. <laughs> are, you, are you shilling for my bank? No, are you getting I'm not. a referral bonus? I know. <laughs> I don't even know who it is, to be honest with you. That's something I don't know. If you want me to, I will. <laughs> That's right. All my assets are offshore. You don't need to worry about it. <laughs> oh, my God. That's hysterical. Okay. <laughs> we'll certainly leave it at that. Offshore, huh? <laughs> Anything else that you would like to share with anyone out there that is going through this? Just keep the faith and keep going. And my recommendation and suggestion would be to stay positive as much as you can. And don't put your heart and soul into every single house because it can do you in when you don't get it. It's very upsetting. So I can understand how discouraged that it can be. Yeah, it can definitely be a roller coaster if you let it be, um, which we we both definitely did over the first three houses. So definitely learn quickly there. Like you said, you can't get too invested. You can't get too attached. You just can't take it personally, even though it is, you know, all of your money and your entire future. You just, you know, just don't worry about it. <laughs> so well, it is funny, but really, but the alternative is you're living on the edge of your seat in panic yeah. and fear for all day, every day with your stomach hurting and thinking right. about all your money vanishing and thinking about, you know, this dream house also vanished. Right. Uh, and that's not a good alternative. So yeah, you really can't take it personally because, hey, a house goes on the market, 30 people bid for it. Only one of them gets to live in it. Otherwise, that that's would right. be really weird. It would be very weird. It would be like it was the first time you walked through and had all those people in there. It'd exactly. Like, yeah. 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 Uh, I'm not I, bidding on a portion. I'm not bidding on a timeshare <laughs> of a house. I, I want the whole thing right. 24-7. 365. So, so that means only one person can get it out of the 30 plus that bid on it. It's got to keep fighting. I guess yeah. you got to keep, uh, keep stacking paper, keep saving up. There you go. That's exactly what you have to do. And then pretty soon you'll be the one that walks in there and puts a bid in and it'll be solid and you'll get the house. Sure. And then, then the next thing Hopefully moves on. Hopefully interest rates aren't 9% by then. Hopefully, you know. Well, I hope not too. Hopefully they're not going to go up too much. Uh, inflation. Is Hopefully in no more banks have collapsed by then. Something like that. <laughs> Hopefully things are smooth sailing. That's the dream, right? Yeah, hey, no. you know, yeah. me and you, George, we're going to have a farm with the rabbits. There you go. And, and yeah. we're <laughs> me and you, George. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Uh, yeah, of mice yeah. and men. Yeah, right. That's it, of mice and men. I was going to say, I remember that. George, oh, that's a terrible ending. <laughs> 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 it's like I told you about that movie, Otto. It's a terrible ending, but it's a very good movie. 
So it's well worth it. It's motivational and insp inspirational, just sad. <sighs> a circle of life. Yeah, I mean, it is inspirational, but sad. I mean, yeah, exactly. And that's what this is, your experience. And so that's why I wanted to have you come on and share your experience, because I think <laughs> you would have a good way of saying it. And you put a little parables in there and they were funny. And let's see, just maybe share. Are you you're considered a millennial, correct? I don't get it really into the whole generation labels and stuff. But yeah, I, I think that I would be considered as a millennial. Yeah. OK, well, you know, I'm like the late bloom. But baby boomer. So like all of us are going to be dead here soon. But yeah, yeah. like I said earlier, that cohort, mid 20s, late 20s, early 30s, that yeah. age millennial. Yeah. Well, it's yeah, good. That's to, where we're at. It's good to know because that's probably the ones that are really just starting to buy homes. Truthfully, in this time, it just seems very strange to me to see it so different now than what it was just a few years ago. So that's why I was so surprised when we talked about it. And like I said, I've talked to neighbors and some other couples and they're in the same boat. It doesn't make them feel good. I mean, they're upset about it, too. But it's just one of those things that's happening right now as we've talked about many things that are, are happening right now. So I hope that you'll come back and talk to me some more, especially when you do um, buy one and let us know that experience. And then also some other stuff that we can talk about, because I know you're pretty up on what's going on in the world. And that's always good to know. Yeah, sure thing. I appreciate it. I'd be happy to come back and talk about some other topics and hopefully can do a uh, part two when we actually do get a house. And hopefully I'll be able to do that <laughs> without crying through the whole interview. <laughs> You'll be fine, I'm sure. Uh, let's see. So what do you think I should name this? Which, what, what's the topic? What do you think? What do you think I should name this? I, I like to name my interviews. So what should I name mm. this one? Maybe you can, I mean, usually when I'm talking through it, I come up with a name. So it might be something like George. I'm not sure. I might have to use that. Yeah. Tell me about the rabbits. <laughs> yeah. Tell me about the rabbits, George. <laughs> Maybe I should name it. Tell me about the houses. How's that? Yeah. That works. Yeah, that's a little better and a little more uplifting. So we'll do that. Well, I thank you very much for joining me today. And I think uh, it's been kind of fun and made me laugh a little bit and made me um, think about how it was to be much younger and going to look at the houses the first time that I did and, and how it gets irritating after doing it many times. <laughs> so yeah. I'm and the feeling of so much possibility and the weight of screwing that possibility up and getting locked in, you know? <laughs> Yes, and I understand with that. But also wanting to get locked into something good at the same time, you know, holding right, out. Right. And so, you know, there is a house out there for you. I'm sure of it. And it just takes time sometimes. And maybe those houses that, that you passed on, um, it was the best thing in the world they ever did. And the next one, it might be it. Who knows? Might hit the jackpot. And so you're going to come back and we'll talk about that experience because that'll be a good one, I'm sure. That's right. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining the Sherlyn Shirley Show today. I thank my guest very much. He was very uh, interesting to talk to and made me laugh a lot. And I think that's always fun. And we should laugh about some of these things because that's what we should be doing in today's world. We don't have enough laughter as it is. So thank you so much, folks, and have a great day. And thank you for listening. You can check us out on pretty much any podcast hosting, The Sherlyn Shirley Show. Have a good day.